I'm a fresh graduate student with a bachelor's degree in science, nutrition to be specific. Around five months ago, I was looking for a decent job that's related to what I've studied. The pandemic certainly made the job hunting even more stressful. However, I got a job in a moderate R&D-based company two weeks after my application for the job. I was quite fussy over the fact that the company had some pretty bad reviews on the job-seeking website regarding the pay and the working environment, but I had to work to earn my living, so I thought nothing of it. I held the position of lab technician, where my routine is basically doing some inspections, laboratory tests on raw materials, in-process and final products, and supporting more complex trials and experiments. So basically, I stay in the lab unless my supervisor asks me to run calibration checks or to do some maintenance like a simple repair to analytical instrumentation. This incident occurred around three weeks after I started working. I was doing my lab test and had to wait for an hour or so to proceed to the next step of the test. So I sat in the corner of the lab and started to doze off because my bedtime schedule had been messed up ever since the lockdown. I don't know how long it had been till I heard someone come into the room. I thought it must have been some intern students who usually come into the lab to prepare for some lab tests, so I wasn't too bothered to look at who or what they were doing. A moment later, I heard the sound of someone messing with the incubator, like pushing random buttons in a quick motion, which is quite abnormal because the incubator is normally already set up readily so there's no need to adjust the temperature. I was about to tell the other person to stop messing with the buttons when the noise stopped and it was quiet again. I was sitting down with my knees to my chest, resting against the table that's placed in the middle of the lab parting the laminar flow cabinets, so if I had to see who it was, I'd need to stand up and face the other side. But I was sleepy, so I decided to just brush it off. When the person was about to leave the room, I glanced over and saw something that is not of a human's legs. It looked like a fishtail standing upright, like in the animated cartoon movie Shark Tail. It was moist and had the color of dirty, muddy green. I just sat there, shocked, contemplating if whatever I saw was real or just a hallucination due to my lack of sleep. Anyhow, I just stopped fretting over it and resumed my work. About a month after, I was early to work on this particular day, and my supervisor had asked me to check on the raw materials as soon as possible to avoid any miss out. So I went to the room where the raw materials are stored, which is located down at the manufacturing plant. When I reached the working area, there were only a few workers and the atmosphere felt a little eerie. Nevertheless, I went straight to the storeroom, did my work, and was about to leave when I heard alarms going off in the nearby storeroom where the dry goods are kept. I rushed to the place and there were people surrounding the room. I took a glimpse of the inside, and it seemed that the dry goods were contaminated or rather eaten by a pest. It was weird seeing the size of the goods that were eaten. It was as though some large animal took bites of the dry goods, and the rotten goods had musty green thick liquid all over them. I was a little shocked too, but I had to do my job, so again I thought nothing of it. Nothing really happened after that until two weeks ago when I saw those fishtails again. I was working on calibration and doing decontamination of a machine when someone walked past behind me and slightly bumped me on the back. I turned around to kind of glare at the person but to no avail because there was no one at the area where I was working. I was getting a little superstitious but continued my work anyway and in the corner of my eye I could see something was going up and down as though playing hide and seek. I stood up from my position and got to the back of the room to check and saw those tails again at the table near the back door. But this time the tails weren't standing upright, but rather were laid on the floor and lashing side to side. This time I was certain I wasn't hallucinating and went to have a closer look. When I got close enough, the thing glided quickly to a nearby room. I ran after it and when I looked into the room, there was nothing weird to be found. I didn't report the incident to anyone because I didn't want anyone thinking I was silly or making up stuff. I'm still working there and hopefully I don't encounter that thing again.
I'm only 14 years old, but I'm very tech savvy. I enjoy hacking computers and even building them from time to time. One of my more recent and morbid hobbies has been exploring the deep web. Before you get the wrong idea, I don't go there for the dark stuff. Well, I do, but not the kind of stuff you're thinking about. I explore the deep web for the joy of finding new websites. Brand new, off-kilter, bizarre ones. I find them and catalog them for my own personal enjoyment. It feels like I'm actively discovering new parts of an ever-growing planet, or at least the dark side of one. Despite it being the deep web, most of the sites I've come across are mundane and uninspiring. For instance, a 9-11 conspiracy site, a dating site for white supremacists, and a site dedicated to assassinating the president. Boring. But then there's some more interesting ones, like a marketplace for selling various serial killers' belongings, a site for worshipping a strange cult called the Clan of the Red Wolf, and a Hitler fan fiction site, violent hypersexual fan fiction, to name a few. These are the kinds of sites that either pique my interest or make me laugh, giving them a spot in my catalog of oddities. While on my usual hunt for the unusual, I came across a site called Parent Snatcher. The layout was very simple and looked more like someone's Tumblr page rather than a deep web website, but I wanted to see what it had to offer. In reading its contents, I found little to placate my hunger for the strange and obscene. It was just a list of pronouns and numbers, coupled with links to eBay listings on the surface web selling furniture. Her, 37, eBay listing, love seat. $14,356. Him, 28. eBay listing, sofa, 11467 Her, 42. eBay listing, drapes, 12569 You get the drift. It's just more of the same after that. The setup confused me. Doing a little more digging, I found various number sequences embedded into the background of the site. Being a fan of encryption, I wondered if it might be a code of some sort. I took down the series of numbers and ran it through one of my many code-breaking programs that I had on my computer. After an hour or so, it popped out a message. Welcome to Parent Snatcher. Need a new mom or dad? Not satisfied with the one you have? Well, you've come to the right place. Follow a her listing for a mother unit and a him listing for a father unit. Ages are included in description. Once payment is received by eBay user, we will send you your new parent. All of our human products come with a lifetime guarantee. We monitor the bonding process 24-7 for quality control. They are equipped with a tracking chip and video surveillance, making it impossible for them to escape. We here at Parent Snatcher desire your full satisfaction above all else. Enjoy. No, that was weird. I've certainly never seen anything like that on the deep web. This was certainly getting a special place in my catalog, whether it was fake or not. After saving the site into my collection, I wondered, what if it actually worked? This is going to sound stupid, but I always wanted a dad. It's been me and my mom for as long as I can remember. She says he left when I was young, but I don't recall him ever being there. As such, I would often fantasize about him returning home seeing me all grown up, and wanting to be a part of my life again. Like I said, it's stupid. Still, I really wanted to know if the site worked. I tried a thousand of different search engines and asked around on forums on both the deep web and the surface web. Not a single mention of Parent Snatcher anywhere. I finally ripped my eyes from my computer monitor and looked over at the clock. It was nearly three in the goddamn morning. I've been searching for information on this one site for several hours, and for one reason or another, I couldn't let it go. Maybe it was my need for a father figure, or perhaps it was the sleep deprivation. Either way, I found myself walking upstairs to my mom's bedroom. Once there, I snuck past her asleep on the bed and reached into her purse located on one of her nightstands. I grabbed her wallet and quietly walked back downstairs to my room. I grabbed one of her credit cards followed the cheapest dad listing on Parent Snatcher to the surface web and clicked on the buy it now option for a ceiling fan. I typed in all of the credit card information required and then paused for a moment. I was about to not only break my mom's trust and spend a boatload of her money, 
but I was also doing something potentially dangerous. What if the man I purchased wasn't nice? What would my mom say or do when he got here? What if there would be no man at all? What if the site was just a carefully orchestrated scam designed in swindling unsuspecting kids out of their parents' money? I asked myself these questions, but they barely made a dent in my curiosity. I hit enter and finalized the process. After sneaking the card back into my mom's purse without being noticed, I waited. Days passed. Those days eventually became weeks. I had to put up with my mom arguing on the phone with her credit card company, as well as eBay, over the mysterious $3,000 purchase made with her card. She never once suspected me of doing the deed, even venting to me about it from time to time. That made me feel guilty. My guilt, however, was no match for my excitement. I could not wait to see if Parent Snatcher was legitimate. The weeks that passed eventually turned into a month. This is when I started becoming weary of the site's claims. I began to accept the fact that I was a dumb kid, fooled by a master con artist. I was left feeling helpless and like an idiot. I had been fantasizing about a scenario in which the site not only worked, but sent me a nice man to be my dad. He would meet me, meet my mom, and they would fall in love. We would be a family. I knew the chances were slim, but I still hoped. I was a fool. One night while on my computer, searching for more deep web gems, I heard a loud bang. It sounded like it was the front door. A burglar, perhaps? I jumped up from my computer and grabbed the baseball bat I kept under my bed. I was ready to fight off any would-be intruder. After getting into a fighting stance, I heard someone shuffling around outside my bedroom. My adrenaline was through the roof. I stood my ground and wound up the bat, ready to swing. My bedroom door swung open. It was a man, wearing all black, including a black ski mask. He looked me up and down, apparently sizing me up before speaking. Are you the one who placed an order with Parent Snatcher? Struck with confusion, I nodded. The man then bolted in my direction and grabbed me. He put his hand over my mouth and pulled me out of my room. I struggled, but he was too strong. Just before he could get me out of the house, I attempted to bite his hand through the leather glove he was wearing. I clenched my teeth as hard as I could and managed to get a reaction. The man ah! groaned in pain. That's when I was able to wiggle my way free and run towards the stairs, all the while screaming at the top of my lungs for my mom to wake up. The man caught up quick and grabbed me again, but my cries for help were effective. My mom showed up at the top of the stairs, just in time to see what was going on. My mom screamed and leapt down the flight of stairs, faster than I've ever seen any person move in my life. She began bashing the guy's head in with her fist, making it nearly impossible for him to hold on to me. He threw some punches back, but I wasn't going to let him get away with laying his dirty hands on my mom. I stretched my leg back as far as it would go, kicked him so hard in his nether regions that he fell to the floor. He still tried fighting back, but my mom and I had the upper hand. He eventually ran from the door and fled from the premises. It's been a few weeks since that man broke into our home. I can only guess that he really did work for Parent Snatcher, but the site wasn't what I hoped it was. It seemed that its goal was not only to make money, but also to kidnap kids. Once they have a billing address, they probably canvass the area for a few weeks and make sure the house in question actually harbors a child or teen. I didn't figure all that out on my own. If I was able to think that far ahead, I wouldn't have wound up in this mess to begin with. I told my mom the truth as well as the police. They figured out the rest. Unfortunately, the site was taken down and the perpetrators were never apprehended. The cops are still on the lookout, though, and offered my mom and I police detail and new security system. So, despite the ordeal, we sleep well. What would Parent Snatcher have done if they had actually captured me? The police wouldn't offer me insight on this, but I'm sure they told my mom. I already have a good guess and he went into some kind of child trafficking ring. I'm sure you can gather what would have happened. Luckily for me, I wasn't captured, so all in all, I've learned a lot from nearly being kidnapped, and one thing is for certain, I will never visit the deep web again.
A few years ago, I did something terrible. Sometimes I really wish I didn't. Something I can never take back, honestly. It all started when my girlfriend, well, ex-girlfriend, broke up with me. I know this might seem trivial and just a part of life is growing up as a person. However, unfortunately for me, it had a complete reverse effect. I know all you think I'm childish and I just needed to take it on the chin and deal with it. You might be right, but I didn't. I helped her with everything within her life. I wasn't going to allow that to happen unpunished. I know it was petty and it was wrong, but you have to understand I was desperate. I was hurting. It honestly felt as though my heart was aching. It was throbbing so hard I honestly thought at any point I would explode. I know that sounds dramatic and I'm honestly not looking for sympathy. I'm not the victim here. Well, not anymore. I made sure of that. I honestly could feel my body shaking with rage, so I got up with hatred and darkness in my heart and I booted up my laptop. I wasn't a stranger to the dark web. I've spent countless hours trying and failing to navigate it to help with my boredom. I only ever found the usual rabbit holes falling into the typical drug and honey trap sites and forums. I just wanted for her to hurt. I wanted her to feel the embarrassment I had felt and suffered at her hands. My original plan, although very distasteful and wrong, wasn't malicious. It wasn't violent in any way. I just wanted to humiliate her. I still had photos and videos from our time together. You know, personal videos and photos of her. And in my pent up anger and depressed state, I thought it was a good idea to use these against her. I see now I was wrong from the start, but I wish I'd only done that. As awful as it seems, that was nothing to what I actually did. I kept digging and digging, clicking link after link until eventually I clicked on the link and I found something that caught my attention. It was a form, a form called the naughty list. On the site was a question. Do you know someone who has been bad? If so, maybe you should put them on a naughty list. Perfect, I thought. This has got to be it. I upload all my personal photos and videos on there and maybe link her social media and we'll see who's laughing then. I thought about adding her address, but she was back living with her family and even I drew the line there. The form wasn't what I expected though. You couldn't just upload to their homepage. There were different sections on it or punishments as they called it. I remember thinking how dramatic it was, how dumb and naive I was. There were several different sections, Elf on the Shelf, Krumpus Cramps, and Frozen Fields, among others. It kind of made me chuckle, I guess. That's why I just didn't think it was anything serious. Anyway, with the sections, Elf on the Shelf kind of made me crack a smile. But that's not what I went with. I chose something called Slay Snatcher. I don't know why I just did. It was kind of funny to me. After clicking on it, I had to wait a good minute and a half before this bright white page loads up, filled with a few black text boxes and a text that read, Santa is waiting for this write-up. Write up his naughty list. Please fill in the details and he'll do the rest. I thought to myself, that's cute. I just thought it was kind of stupid, but I filled it in regardless. It was name, age, and birthday and links to the person's social media. It was all there. Everything I was so desperately looking for, and of course, photo uploads. Jackpot, I remember smiling to myself, halfway cackling in the process. It wouldn't allow me to upload any videos, but the photos were more than enough for me. It was hot girl summer type pictures, if you know what I mean. It also asked for the person's address, but as I previously said, I wasn't really about to go that far, but I did write in her hometown our hometown, something I really wish I didn't do. After I had finished putting in her information without even a moment's hesitation, I clicked submit. After a few seconds, a little text box appeared asking, are you sure? Santa won't forget. He checks that list twice, all names are final. I smugly pressed yes, and that was that. Perfect, I thought, until I was redirected to another page. It took a few minutes to upload, but when it did, it caught me off guard. It simply said, thank you for submitting the naughty list. We really appreciate it. I had achieved my goal. I thought job done, it's all uploaded. People will see them and message her on social media. Then she'll be humiliated, feeling better about myself. I calmly and confidently shut down and wiped everything correctly, making sure I couldn't be traced or implicated in any way. 
The next morning, I woke with the biggest and most disturbing smile I've ever produced. I was so pleased with myself, looking back on it now. It honestly makes me feel sick. I couldn't wait to see the fruits of my labor. I was so excited to see her suffer. I wanted to break her and for her to feel as worthless as she had made me feel. To my absolute dismay and disappointment, nothing happened. I waited and I waited, but nothing. No angry phone calls or texts. No outraged social media posts. Nothing at all. I thought maybe at first she could have been trying to ignore it. Or maybe she reported the abuse and had been told not to engage any potential troll or creeper. I mean, surely it worked, right? I mean, there's no way I could check. I couldn't find that link again, even if I tried. Anyone who surfed the deep web or dark web would know this is true. It's just not catalog, it's a mess. And I only stumbled across it by chance in the first place. I wish I hadn't. So a few more days go by, and by now my excitement was faded. And I feel dejected and genuinely upset that it clearly hadn't worked. No one could be so calm if it had worked. And I couldn't exactly ask her to go check. That would just point the finger straight at me. So after a while, I just gave up. In truth, the whole ordeal was now tiresome to me. And as sad as it sounds, it has strangely made me feel better. Like I hadn't gotten it all out of my system somehow. A few more days later, I was awoken to a loud knock on my door. Previous drama of my former relationship had completely escaped my mind at this point. And just for some context, I live alone and don't get many visitors at all. So I was more annoyed than curious to see who was at my door. So you can imagine my shock when I flung open my door to be greeted by the stern faces of two police officers. Shit, I thought to myself, this is it, I'm going to prison. Everyone is going to think I'm some kind of freak, which I guess in all fairness, I was at the time. They asked to come in and I of course obliged. I said, come on. I remember thinking at the time, they've only asked me to come in. As of right now, I'm not under arrest or anything, so I better see what they want. But what they asked me completely and utterly knocked the wind out of me. When was the last time you saw Katie? I was speechless and for a second, I must have looked like the most guilty and suspicious person in the world. Realizing this, I quickly shook the look of surprise and dread off my face and answered as calmly as I could muster. Not since we broke up, around two weeks ago. This was true, but it didn't save me from the barrage of intense scrutiny and questioning. Where were you on the night of? I told them the truth at home. Can anyone verify this? I said, uh, no. I live alone, but I get dropped off at home after work by one of my colleagues, which is routine after every shift, so I can, I guess. And what time was this? I told him the truth around 10.30, and the cameras at work would show me leaving at around 10.20, and it's only about a 10 minute drive here. Did you leave your property at any other point after you returned? No. I told the cops that there's a camera by the apartment's entrance that would show I'm telling the truth. His face, intense stare, and concentration into my eyes seemed to waver and loosen slightly. So I thought I'd push my luck and ask what this was all about. He stated that although he can't give me details on an ongoing investigation, Katie had been reported missing. She was last seen by her mother leaving their home to shop and browse the stores but never returned. The police officers left soon after that and actually thanked me for my time. They did check the CCTV and with my boss and colleague who confirmed my story and that I was telling the truth. Days turned into weeks and still nothing. It seemed as though she just had vanished into thin air. I couldn't believe it. It couldn't have been because of me. I thought maybe it's possibly some creep stalked her socials and found her address after I posted them alone with the images, but surely it had to be a coincidence. That stupid form couldn't be real. It said Santa's naughty list. That definitely couldn't be real. The longer it went on, the more horrible I felt. I know I wasn't physically responsible, but in one way or another, I had caused this, or at least put the wheels in motion. I felt just as guilty as if I had done something to her. I mean, this is the girl I once loved, the girl I still love, and I had done this. I had caused this and her poor mother, they had been estranged for years. I tried to get on normally with my life, but it was hard. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat, and you know something, I knew I deserved it. I would cringe every time I caught myself feeling sorry for myself. I took the drinking to make myself sleep. 
anything to numb the pain, anything to get the image of her face and the sounds of her screams out of my head. I couldn't go to the police, but how could I? If I confessed, my life was as good as over, as selfish as it was. I just didn't believe it would even help to find her if I did. Maybe I was just being a coward, but it was hopeless. She was gone. I waited every morning for an update. I would always call the police station to get an update. It was torture until one day. They did find her. But as I'm sure you all can already tell, this story doesn't have a happy ending. But she was eventually found in an old abandoned factory in the outskirts of the next town over. I just couldn't believe it. I could feel my throat tighten to the point I was struggling to breathe when I heard the news. In my head, I was begging and pleading with whoever or whatever. It must be some kind of mistake, a mix-up. It couldn't be because of me. But unfortunately, it was no mix-up. She was found stuffed in a chimney. Her body was inside a sack, a toy sack. I couldn't believe it. I felt sick. This must be some kind of sick joke. I kept trying and failing to convince myself. I felt my body tremble. She had been there for a while, and you could tell by looking at her. They knew it was her because stuffed into her eye socket was a small piece of paper, a small piece of paper that read, Naughty List, Katie, you should have been good. I blacked out, and I collapsed where I was standing, and I hit my head pretty hard. When I regained consciousness, I hoped, I prayed, it was just a bad dream. But of course it wasn't. It was real. It was all real. I'm a simp. Nothing will ever make up for the torture I subjected a girl I once loved and cherished. All because of my own ego and misguided sense of pride and self-worth. I wish I could take it all back. You deserve justice, Katie. You deserve to be able to rest in peace at the very least. Maybe confessing will bring you and your family closure. Maybe ending my own life will make us even. But regardless of the answer, I'm far too much of a coward for either. I won't go on the dark web again, just because of this situation.